Hello, I was born in 1960 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Rita Marie and Frank S. Pinello. Born and raised in the city of Pittsburgh, the north side of town, Pittsburgh, the north side. You've been there, Bobby. You were a little scared because it had been run down, but grew up as a city boy. I was a city boy. I liked the city, but I was lucky enough to spend my summers north of Pittsburgh in a little town called Zelianople. Bobby, you were there, where I got to experience fishing and more of a rural setting in life, so I was able to get a taste of both worlds. So that's how I spent my youth, you know, playing basketball, and, you know, I had all my friends, Mikey Hildorfer and Marty Bazaka, and and you know, getting into fights and chasing girls and riding motorcycles, and I had a good uh, a good childhood. Uh, I went to Catholic grade school, Annunciation grade school, uh, all Catholic, co-ed, boys and girls. Uh, I went to I was an altar boy. Uh, I went to Catholic high school, North Catholic high school, um, and then got pulled into the workforce pretty early. My dad had a business, a bar business. I grew up in the bar business, you know, tending bar and cleaning up the bar and going with my dad and helping him out with the bar. And when I got old enough to look like I was old enough, I tended bar for my dad. I was like 15 or so, you know, wasn't supposed to, but I helped him. And so I got that experience of working with people and, you know, handling money and entertaining people and uh, blah, 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 blah. And then from there, uh, high school, at the end of high school, uh, where I came from and where I grew up, my parents were of the mindset that you needed a trade. A trade is something that you learn that you can do. College was not mandatory. College was not talked about. They did not go to college. Their parents didn't go to college. So I... They said, you need to get a trade, son. You got to have a trade. You got to have something you can make money with. So um, I was introduced to the beauty academy business, you know, beauty college. And I took a tour of the school and it was a big building in downtown Pittsburgh. Now, mind you, I was 17, 18 years old. And I took a tour of this academy and I liked it. And at that time, you know, it was all girls. It was a couple guys but most was all girls. So it was a big academy, a thousand people in it. Most of them were girls and I was 18. And so I said, okay, I'll do this. You know, it was like a Forrest Gump move. And it wasn't a lot of thought to it, but I was good at it. I was so good at it. I was introduced to be an instructor at the academy, the advanced styles director of the company. Um, you know, I was, had, and at the same time, I opened a couple of my uh, beauty shops, haircut shops of my own. So by 20 years old, I was an educator in a field I just got into two years, you know, a year earlier, a year and a half earlier, opened two shops. And then I got approached, I was approached by the Pantene company to represent their hair care product line across the country. So now I was flying all over the country on the weekends and entertaining other professionals, cutting hair, selling product, entertaining, and it was terrific. I mean, I got paid really well and I got a chance to really, you know, do what I love, which was perform and be in front of people. I loved it. I was a competition judge for hair cutting contests. I've traveled to Europe, I've been to Canada for training. So I had a whole world of experiences there. Also, uh, so from there, out of the Beauty Academy, I went on to open more shops. I, I had five salons total at one time. International Haircutters was the name of my salon chain. I had five shops in five different locations all over Northern Virginia. Had a couple of partners and it kind of just fell apart, you know. But while I was in the business working, I was very busy. I did 25 heads a day, you know, 25 customers a day, haircuts, colors, highlights, you know, fast pace, selling product, blah, 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 blah. That was the beauty side of it. Um, and that's when I started formulating my own product line, which I'll fast forward in a minute and tell you what that is and where that is, is in my life. And that then after Beauty Academy stuff and the salon business, I, I just got tired of it. You know, I worked for 20 years behind the chair, 20 years behind a chair working, making money, 
and I got tired of it. Well, it had hailed. A hailstorm hit Northern Virginia in 1999 and demolished Fairfax County. And I noticed that day, the next day, all these trucks were going around into these neighborhoods and they were, and I saw these roofing being done, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, long story short there, I was approached about working for this storm company that did roof and siding and gutter work, that was insurance replacement work. And I got good at that, I was good at it. I got promoted, I was top seller. I, was, I got promoted to a manager. I opened a satellite office for them. And then the hail work kind of fell, you know, cooled off. And so I said, well, if I can't do insurance related work, I need to develop my skills and have, open up like a home improvement company, my own business. So I started it. It's called Virginia Exteriors. Bought myself a dump truck and shifted gears and said, hey, I went out and, and sold what I knew from the insurance business, but I sold it to people, uh, you know, for money instead of letting the insurance company pay for it. So and did that and that was good. And then I started building and I, I built a house or two and made a bunch of mistakes and fought through it. And then the market crashed. This is when, and this was in 05, the bottom fell out of the construction market. And so I sold my house and we moved to Salem, Virginia. When I moved to Salem, Virginia, which is where my wife is from, I fell into the car business. Now I made a decision. I said, either I can go take my real estate exam and try to do that, or I can go into something that I can make money right away. Um, and so I went into the car business and I'm glad I did. You know, I, I, I think I'd have been successful in real estate because I'm kind of in that business now, but I loved selling cars and I was good at it. I was top salesman in the Roanoke Valley with high-end pre-owned cars for eight and a half of the 10 years that I worked in that business. So I sold cars and then I kind of got tired of that because they took the money out of it, you know? And they, they didn't, make, you couldn't make as much. They started going, we can't pay this guy this kind of money to do this. Let's try to cut his pay. And then I finally got out of it. So I got out of that and I went to work for the Roanoke Times. I was, I hired my way into a terrific position as a key accounts manager. And they didn't, uh, I didn't work for seven months. They kept moving me around, but they paid me a bunch of money, but I liked that experience. And then I went back to the car business as a sales manager for Cadillac for a short period of time. They closed the store, even though I was starting to build their business and was successful selling cars, new Cadillacs. Cadillac wasn't a good brand, it was a dying brand. So I got out of that and I went to work in a home improvement company. A friend of mine owned a home improvement company. So the next day I was gainfully employed for town and country renovations and I was selling home improvement services. And I sold a million dollars worth of work in one year, right out of the chute. And then he did something stupid and I left him and went to work for Extreme Design Concrete. Glad I did because I got an opportunity to get back into some construction that I loved doing bigger stuff, stuff for VDOT, stuff at Virginia Tech, stuff for the city of Roanoke, concrete, asphalt, you know, major construction stuff. And I was good at that and I liked it. And then he did something stupid. So I left him and I don't typically jump around. Like I've done three main things in my life, most of my career, except for a couple of years there, I jumped around when I was just trying to get settled. But now I have a home improvement company called PDS, which is short for Pro Dealer Systems, but PDS Construction does home improvements, uh, mainly exterior home improvements, roofing, siding, gutters, windows, doors, decks, fences, porches, concrete, and asphalt. Very successful. We're going to have a really good fall and a great 2021. Uh, and I also started a new company called One Level Development, which you see my sign and my logo and my matching sunglasses. One Level Development, as of the first of this year, purchased eight raw land vacant lots that I'm starting now to uh, build houses on. Uh, my own floor plans, I have three models to choose from. Um, I would have already had my Class A contractor's license if it were not for the fact that the COVID uh, slowed things down uh, in the testing facility. But I'm getting ready to, matter of fact, October 1st, I'll take my the uh, 
uh, the residential building contractors test portion. I've already passed the A part, but I have to do the RBC part. Once I pass that test, I'll become a class A contractor that has the uh, a license to build homes for myself and for other people. So I've been, cra you know, Bobby, you know, I've been cracking the books for months and testing and learning and loving that and immerse myself in it. And at the same time, I've also have my own hair care product business called Salvatize that I developed when I was in the hair business 20 years ago, but I've always kept the formulation and all the concepts related to it. Healthy hair in five days, the secret to healthy hair. I wrote a book, little booklet on healthy hair. Um, so uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I'm also, you know, the thing that I'm really excited about being able to do is once I um, get just a little bit further along, and I'll do it this fall, I'll start it. I'm going to start doing podcasts for personal and professional development, uh, picking interesting people to talk to and just encouraging people to take risks and to be responsible and to do things to add value to society. Um, so podcasts are a big deal to me. I got, I think, three or four YouTube channels. I put YouTube videos up all the time on sales or motivation or hair or beauty related stuff. So now I'm 60 years old. Um, in this chapter of my life, I love the hard physical labor of working construction. I love um, where I'm at in this case. All my kids are grown. Um, but I'm proud. And, you know, one of my good friends said how proud he was of me. He said, I've never seen anybody quit a job at night and in the mornings gainfully employed. And not only does he do all right in it, he excels in it. So... You know, could I do things different? Yes, I wish I'd have gone to college. I wish I was able to get a more formal education. But I wouldn't trade my, I don't know, um, malleability. I always tell Bobby, you got to be malleable. Malleability, the ability to be flexible, to, you know, to embrace failure. Struggle is what you seek because it makes you awesome and interesting. So that's my life. Uh, I'm in good shape trying to get in even better shape so I can do this for a long time. So I guess that's it. I hope that helps. If not, let me know and I'll give you more later.